They shot dead three 19-year-old soldiers and hurled an axe at another, wounding him seriously. And that's all the news from ITN. Sorry, can I do one more take? One, one last take. Good evening. The Environment Secretary, Mr Crossland, said today that rate increases next year should be substantially less than they have been this year. He's told local councils they can't increase their budgets for next year, and to make sure they comply, he's announced new limits on the money that they get from the government. In Northern Ireland, a soldier has been killed and another seriously injured by a bomb near Fork Hill in South Armagh. The soldiers were investigating a parked car when a bomb inside it went off. It could have been detonated from across the border in the Irish Republic, only a few hundred yards away. The dead soldier was Sergeant Simon Francis, aged 29, from Kent. An official inquiry has begun into yesterday's accident at Dunsfold Airport, in which a woman and five schoolgirls were killed when their car was hit by a plane. The executive jet was being piloted by the wartime flying ace, Group Captain Catsize Cunningham, He's the chief test pilot for Hawker Sidley. The plane had just taken off with a Chinese delegation on board when it flew into a flock of birds. Some of the birds were sucked into the engines. The plane crashed onto the car which was travelling on a road beyond the airport. None of the nine people on board the plane was seriously hurt. Next, the doctor's dispute, and Mrs Barbara Castle, the social services secretary, has warned hospital consultants and junior hospital doctors the government won't back down from their policies despite the doctor's op despite the doctor's opposition. The junior doctors are threatening a nationwide work to rule from next Thursday, unless they get improved overtime pay. Mrs Castle told the Commons that junior hospital doctors still haven't produced any evidence to show why they should get extra money under the government's pay policy. And Mrs Castle warned the hospital consultants, who are considering mass resignations and a ban on all work except emergencies from December the 1st, that the government will stand firm on their plans to abolish pay beds. Overseas now, three Israeli students were killed and two wounded in an attack by Arab guerrillas in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights area last night. Israel claims the guerrillas, armed with axes and submachine guns, burst into a dormitory on a religious farm settlement two miles from the Syrian border. They shot dead three 19-year-old soldiers and hurled an axe at another, wounding him seriously. And that's all the news from ITN. Sorry, can I do one more take? One, one last take. Sorry. Sure. No, 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 not at all. Good evening. The Environment Secretary, Mr Crossland, said today that rate increases next year should be substantially less than they have been this year. He's told local councils they can't increase their budgets for next year, and to make sure they comply, he's announced new limits on the money that they get from the government. In Northern Ireland, a soldier has been killed and another seriously injured by a bomb near Fork Hill in South Armagh. The soldiers were investigating a parked car when a bomb inside it went off. It could have been detonated from across the border in the Irish Republic, only a few hundred yards away. The dead soldier was Sergeant Simon Francis, aged 29, from Kent. An official inquiry has begun into yesterday's accident at Dunsfold Airport, in which a woman and five schoolgirls were killed when their car was hit by a plane. The executive jet was being piloted by the wartime flying ace Group Captain Catsize Cunningham. He's the chief test pilot for Hawker Sidley. The plane had just taken off with a Chinese delegation on board when it flew into a flock of birds. Some of the birds were sucked into the engines. The plane crashed onto the car which was travelling on a road beyond the airport. None of the nine people on board the plane was seriously hurt. Next, the doctor's dispute. Mrs Barbara Castle, the Social Services Secretary, has warned hospital consultants and junior hospital doctors the government won't back down from their policies despite the doctors' opposition. The junior doctors are threatening a nationwide work to rule from next Thursday unless they get improved overtime pay. Mrs Castle told the Commons that junior hospital doctors still haven't produced any evidence to show why they should get extra money under the government's pay policy. And Mrs Castle warned the hospital consultants, who are considering mass resignations and a ban on all work except emergencies from December the 1st, that the government will stand firm on their plans to abolish pay beds. Overseas, and three Israeli students were killed and two wounded in an attack by Arab guerrillas in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights area last night. Israel claims the guerrillas, armed with axes and submachine guns, burst into a dormitory on a religious farm settlement two miles from the Syrian border. 
They shot dead three 19-year-old soldiers and hurled an axe at another, wounding him seriously. And that's all from ITN. The dead man was John Davis, skipper of the hull trawler, the Victor. Two members of his crew were badly injured in the same incident. What happened was this. Just after midnight, in worsening weather conditions, the Victor put down her nets for one last trawl. There were five or six other trawlers in the area, being looked after by the British supply vessel, the Wasp. But there was another boat watching over them too, and that was the Icelandic gunboat, the Odin, the best equipped and the fastest in the Icelandic Navy. Moments after the victor's nets went down, the Odin changed course, put on speed, and moved menacingly towards the victor. The wasp spotted what was going on and gave chase, but too late. The Odin cut across the stern of the victor, ripping up the hawsers that keep the nets down in the water. Flayed steel wires whipped back onto the trawler's deck, splicing into the uh, crew who were standing there manning the capstans, trying to bring in the nets out of the way of the Odin's path. On deck was Mr. Davis and two of the crew, and Mr. Davis was hit by the full force of one of the flying horses. He was killed instantly. The two other men are too badly injured to be taken off the boat. A doctor and a surgeon are on their way there now by helicopter. Well, the man who's done all the negotiations on the British government's behalf, at least with the Icelandic government, has been Roy Hattersley, junior foreign office minister. He's with me now. Mr. Hattersley, when you left the island ten days ago after your talks then, didn't you fear that just such an incident as this was inevitable? There was always a danger that this sort of thing would happen, but of course we hoped that the Icelandic government wouldn't take such action against our trawlers and therefore wouldn't create this danger. And we also hoped that if wires were cut and they did lash back, that the men on the trawlers would be able to take cover in time and get sufficient warning of the attack. But that, of course, hasn't happened. Well, is this now a grave enough incident to make you bring in the British Navy?